weep. Heaven fashioned us of nothing, and we strive to bring ourselves to nothing. Farewell, Cariola, thy sweet armful. If I do never see thee more, be a good mother to your little ones. Save them from the tiger. Farewell. Let me look on you once more. For that speech came from a dying father. Your kiss was colder than that I've seen in holy anchor. I'd give a dead man's skull. My heart is turned to a heavy lump of lead with which I sound my danger. Very well. My laurel is all withered. Look, madam, what a troop of armed men make towards us. Oh, they are very welcome. When fortune's wheel is overcharged with princes, the weight makes it move swift. I would have my ruin be sudden. Why dost thou wrap thy poison pills in gold and sugar? Your elder brother, the Lord Ferdinand, is come to visit you, and sends you word, because once he rashly made a solemn vow never to see you more, he comes in the night. He will kiss your hand and reconcile himself, but for his vow he dares not see you. At his pleasure. I'll lead you to him. darkness suits you well. I would ask you pardon. You have it. For I count it the honorablest revenge where I may kill to pardon. Where are your cubs? Whom? Call them your children. For though our national law distinguish bastards from true legitimate issue, compassionate nature makes them all equal. You visit me for this, and you violate a sacrament of the church who make you howl in hell for it. It had been well could you have lived thus, always. For indeed you were too much, either light, but no more. I come to seal my peace with you. Here is a hand to which you vowed much love, the ring upon it you gave. I affectionately kiss it. Pray do. And bury the print of it in your heart. I will leave this ring with you for a love token. And the hand as sure as the ring. And do not doubt, but you shall have the heart too. When you need a friend, send it to him that owned it. You shall see whether he can aid you. You are very cold. I fear you are not well after your travel. Oh, lights! Oh, horrible! Let her have lights enough. What witchcraft does he practice that he hath left the dead man's hand here? Look you, here's the piece on which was tamed. He doth present you this sad spectacle, that now you know directly they are dead, hereafter you may wisely cease to grieve, 
for that which cannot be recovered. There is not between heaven and earth one wish I stay for after this. It wastes me more than work mine own picture, fashioned in wax, stuck with a magical needle and buried in some foul dunghill. And yon's an excellent property for a tyrant which I would account mercy. What's that? If they would bind me to that lifeless trunk and let me freeze to death. Come, you must live. Oh, that's the greatest torture. Souls feel in hell, in hell that they must live and cannot die. Fie, despair. Remember you're a Christian. Church enjoins fasting. I'll starve myself to death. Leave this vain sorrow. Things being at the worst begin to mend. The bee, when he hath shot his sting into your hand, may then play with your eyelid. Good, comfortable fellow. Persuade a wretch that's broke upon the wheel to have his bones new set. Entreat him live to be executed again. Who must dispatch me? Now, be of comfort. I will save your life. Indeed, I have not leisure to tend to so small a business. Oh, by my life, I pity you. Thou art a fool, then, to pity a thing so wretched as cannot pity itself. <laughs> Let me blow these vipers from me. Oh, go pray. No! Oh, go curse! Fire. I could curse the stars oh, and those three smiling seasons of the year into a Russian winter. May the world to its first chaos. Give a star shine still. Oh, but you must remember my curse had a great way to go. And plagues that make lanes through the largest families consume them. Let them like tyrants never be remembered but for the ill they have done. That all the zealous Prayers of mortified churchmen forget oh, them. Uncharitable! Let heaven a little while cease crowning martyrs. Go, howl on this, and say I long to bleed. It is some mercy when men kill with speed. Excellent. As I would wish. She's plain in art. These presentations are but framed in wax, and she takes them to true substantial bodies. Why do you do this? To bring her to despair. Faith. End here. I'm going no further in your cruelty. Send her a penitential garment to put on next to her delicate skin. And furnish her with beads and prayer books. Damn her. That body of hers, while that my blood ran pure in it, was more worth than that which thou wouldst comfort, called a soul. Shh. I will send her masks of common courtesans, have her meat served up by bawds and ruffians, and cause she'll needs be mad. I'm resolved to remove forth the common hospital all the mad folk and place them near her lodging. There let them practice together, sing and dance and act their gambols to the full of the moon. If she can sleep the better for it, let her. Your work is almost ended. Must I see her again? Yes. Never. You must. Never in my own shape. That's forfeited by my intelligence and this last cruel lie. When you send me next, the business shall be comfort. Very likely. Thy pity is nothing of kin to thee. Antonio lurks about Milan. Thou shalt shortly thither to feed a fire as great as my revenge. What hideous noise was there? The wild consort of madman lady, which your tyrant brother had placed about your lodging. This tyranny, I think, was never practiced till this hour. 